all creatives. I remember a, a while ago having a little, you know, you have a little question about what, why is my voice needed? Mm. Like there's a, there's great stuff out there, you know, in the arts, in creativity. There's so much good stuff. Mm. Why do I need to add my voice to mm. it? Mm. And then I had this real moment. I just thought, you know, it's like the difference between a solo instrument and an orchestra, mm. yeah. you know. Yeah, okay. A solo instrument is great and there's absolutely a place for that. But what happens when it's added to an orchestra, when it's added to, you add your sound, mm. you add your voice, you add your instrument to what's already going on. And it creates this even more beautiful thing. Hello, it's Coco, your host of The Big Chat and also the founder of the Tom Joel Soapbox Race, which is racing its way to you on it's going to be done all in park 24th of june we are selling so many tickets at the moment we're so grateful for those ticket sales because that's what puts the event on the ticket sales um the people that sponsor us that's how we pay for this amazing event to take place so we are sponsoring the big chat to get the message out there about the soapbox but you'll see a lot of these going up and around all over the place they're going to be going up all over the town we're going to be on the front cover of a few magazines there's going to be lots of information for coming out about us but the main thing is get on twsoapboxrace.com and get your tickets to come and support some amazing businesses who are going to be creating wacky creations racing down the hill we've got food vendors we've got drink vendors we've got arts and craft we've got music we've got local and live there um, and most of all we're doing this to raise money for some really good charities um, our charities of choice um, are hospice in the world always um, mental health resources and Pickering Cancer Drop-In Centre and we've also got food banks on the day for Nourish but the other races there they get to choose their second chosen charity so there's going to be so much support out there so every ticket that you buy every bit of support that you give is going to help keep this event as part of our town because let's face it Tunbridge Wells just wouldn't be the same without the soapbox so be there or be square. Um, I will definitely be there and so will the big chat. So we'll be chatting to people on the 24th of June in our VIP tent with Edney and Edney. I might get a new pair of specs even maybe. Um, but just just get online and get tickets. It's, it's going to be it's gonna be the best yet, I promise you. And I'm very proud to sponsor something else I created with something else I created because... It gives back to you, and that's what we're about, is giving back to the community. So I'll see you on the 24th of June. 24th of June, the Tunbridge Wells Soapbox. Be there. Be there. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The Big Chat with Word Up. Um, you'll notice that Coco's not here. She's going to be joining us later. But today um, you have me and we have Dan and we have a guest today called the lovely Naomi Hutchison. Hi. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Dan. Thanks for having Hi. me. Good you're, to have you. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Um, really exciting. Let's dive in. Word up. What does it mean to you? That's a great question. Word up is such uh, an inclusive place. Yeah. Um, I... My my journey with sort of words mm. and, you know, spoken word and creativity, I've always been involved in communication. So I've always, you know, tried to use words for good, if you like. Yeah. Um, I'm okay with standing up in front of a room of people. You know, some people hate that. Um, I sort of got over that a little while ago. I don't mind doing that. Um, but actual spoken word and poetry is something quite new for me. So... For years, I'd given talks. I'd done all that kind of stuff. Um, and then in lockdown, it really changed for me. And you know how we all, you know, we couldn't see people as normal. We weren't all together and we couldn't communicate in the same way. And so I guess that just encouraged me. It kind of pushed me into being a little bit creative yeah. with how I wanted to get stuff across. So for me, it's not about the actual words themselves it's not about like poetry for poetry's sake it's more about the fact if you feel you've got a message to share mm. if you feel you've got something good to say mm. then work at creatively what's the best way of getting that across um and so then when it was locked down I thought you know well, we've got to think creatively about how we do this and so I started 
writing a little bit of poetry. In fact, I remember writing my first poem mm. in lockdown. I don't think it was that great, but I wrote my first poem in lockdown. It was called The Kitchen Table. Yeah. It was about my kitchen table. Mm. And um and it was about how basically that represented what we were going through because our kitchen table just used to be somewhere we would eat our meals. And then it had become the schoolroom where we had to do homeschooling. It became the office where we had to do our work. It became everything. And it kind of represented what had happened to us. So, mm. you know, um, as I got two boys, you know, was a mum, I'd become the hairdresser because I had to cut their hair mm. and I had to be the school teacher. Yeah. And it, we had, became all these different things. And it was just that likening the kitchen table to what we were going through. And I just thought, oh, well, that's really interesting that in a few lines, mm. you can put across what you might have said in half an hour, you know, mm. if you'd been yeah. given half an hour, yeah. but you can actually distill it down to something really small. And I really, I liked that. Um, and I just thought, you know what, people are at home, they're okay to watch a little two minute thing online or read a little poem or something. And I think that just encouraged me to get a little bit more creative with my communication. So did you post that kind of straight away? Did you send it to your friend? How did you, so, <laughs> so that's where you started poetry. So how long did it take you to send that to a friend or to put it online? It's funny you ask that <laughs> because, um, I sent it straight to a very good friend of mine who I kind of partner with in creativity. She's a songwriter called Myrie Neves, who you know. Yeah. And um, I sent it to her just because we're good friends and we mm. encourage each other in our creativity. And um, it, she just was having a busy time or whatever. And it took her a little while to get back and, you know, mm. say, hey, this mm. is great. Well yeah, done. Love it. Yeah, Although yeah. she didn't love it. But yeah. you know that whole time yeah. when you feel like you've put yourself out yeah. there and then you're waiting horrible, for some yeah. encouragement <laughs> back. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Like, and all you can say or think in that way is they hate it. Yeah. Yes. And your mind is constantly telling you they hate it. And when you get that kind of reassurance of like, actually, yeah, 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 it's good, but, you know, maybe you should put a bit more of yourself into it or, you know, any kind of criticism is fine as long as somebody has just acknowledged it as a thing. Yeah. Which I think is what Word Up is. It's kind of just gives people a voice, gives people a platform. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's, it, you know, we listen to poetry, basically. A big part of why we listen to poetry is because of hip-hop and, um, you know, like the, the death poetry jams and these kind of things. So it's coming from a completely different place, which I think is giving so many more people a voice because you don't yeah. just have to be a traditional poet. Yeah. Because that doesn't suit everyone. So it's great to get songwriters, um, poets, novelists, uh, rappers and all that everyone in a room because we all inspire yeah. each other to a different yeah. style yeah um, but just going back to what you were saying about um you know finding it easy to get up and talk in front of people that's mm. great for you how did that happen though was it just you threw yourself in at the deep end at some point or has it happened gradually because yeah we, we all have a different step into that sort of like <clears throat> you know that comfort zone that we eventually get into. Yeah, absolutely. And I was thrown into it, basically. So my degree was in theology. So this goes back to when I was a student. and um, But it was a very practical course. So they sent us off once a year. So it's a three-year course. Once a year, you had to go for a month and do a practical placement. So I was sent off in the first year. So I'm like 18, 19 years old. And I was studying theology. So they sent me to this church, this little church in South Wales, and um, I had to go and just work there for a month, just do anything that they were doing. And I was given this group of women to speak to. I had to come up with something to say to them. And um, it was the first time I'd ever done anything like that. And at the end of it, like I managed to get through it. And then at the end of it, I remember a woman came up to me and she said, how did you learn to speak like that? That's amazing. Yeah. I really oh, want to wow. do what yeah. you do. And I went, you're joking, right? Like yeah. That's my first time wow. of doing it. But then when that happens a few times, you sort of think, oh, OK, maybe this is something that's yeah. OK and I can yeah. do this. And I think that's one of the reasons we need to speak into each other's yeah. lives, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We need to speak the gold that we see in people yeah. because we often don't see it ourselves. Yeah. Or we assume that everyone can do those things mm. that we can do. Yeah. And so mm. actually, when we speak into someone and say, hey, I see this in you, you're brilliant at that. Yeah. You're great at that. Yeah. Keep doing more of that. Yeah. Great. So then we sort of step into it and mm. we realise, OK, this is something I can contribute yeah so it, I guess it kind of mm. started there um yeah and then I worked for youth charities I've worked for churches I've spoken to teenagers you know yeah hard crowds really yeah. speaking to yeah. bunches of yeah. teenagers yeah. um but but lots of that and I guess that's all sort of grounding 
So then when you get up to speak somewhere like Word Up, that did feel different for me though, because mm. it's a different form of communication. Mm. And so it was it was still new in a way. Yeah. Um and we were just chatting earlier, weren't we? The first time that I ever um shared a poem in public mm. was last year at the Tumber Dwells Fringe Festival. Wow. That night that you guys did, wow. you were running okay. it with yeah. the brilliant yeah. Kate Phipps. Yeah. And you were there. And um first time I met you, Dan, I think, yeah. that night. Yeah, I think it was. And um and I was I was nervous. I was really nervous because I hadn't it just I felt like I stuck out like a sore thumb because I felt like Really? Yeah, because wow. I felt like I'm in a room full of people that do this all the time. Yeah. And they're just gonna know that I oh, don't wow. do this all the time, you know? Um anyway, I did it and everyone was so, so lovely. Mm. And then at the end, I don't think I've ever said this to you, Dan. And at the end, you got up and sort of summed up the evening, you know. And um, I think my piece had been something about, like, it's okay that we're all different. It's good that we're all different. We need to bring our differences and that's how we grow and learn from each other. And you said at the end something like, you said, you know, this has been great, guys. And, and that's what, you know, that's what life's about. Like what Naomi's saying. And you actually like name checked me at the end. You probably don't remember. I, I do, because I remember <laughs> it was a very positive piece. And that's what I love about your poetry. It's so positive. Right. Um, and I think it's... It's, it's something that everyone can hear and relate to and, and understand. Mm. You know, sometimes poetry can be quite deep and take twists and turns, and it's a little bit more difficult to sort of, you know, to sort of tune in for the whole yeah. time. But I find I'm constantly, for the whole of your poem, I'm listening and I'm Oh, on that's that so lovely. You, so, yeah, but you're so right. Like, we need it all, don't we? We need, you know, because there's some poetry, like even at Word Up, that's much more dark than what mm. I bring. Of course. I, you know, I happen to love you know light and hope and mm, love and mm. so I feel like that's good stuff to be spreading mm. so probably most of my work comes from from that place mm. um but we need all of it don't yeah, we absolutely, and I, yeah. I remember I think all creatives I remember a, a while ago having a little you know you have a little question about what why is my voice needed mm. like there's a there's great stuff out there you know in the arts in creativity there's so much good stuff mm. why, why do I need to add mm. my voice to mm. it mm. and then I had this real moment I just thought you know it's like the difference between a solo instrument and an orchestra mm. yeah. you know mm. yeah oh yeah a solo instrument is great and there's absolutely a place for that but what happens when it's added to an orchestra, when it's added to, you add your sound, mm. you add your voice, you add your instrument to yeah. what's already going on. And it creates this even more beautiful thing. And mm. I think that's, you know, we see that in Tunbridge Wells, in the in the creative scene, in the spoken word scene. Like, we need everyone, like, add your voice to it because you have something to say. And then mm. it, together we create something beautiful. And mm. you, you just see it in life. That's what we need. We each need to bring our contribution absolutely yeah i think that's a big thing with um poetry any creativity is that each and every one of us is unique so at the very least if we can just put a, put a bit of us into it you're going to create something original yeah you know and i know it's tough for some people like you say some people um write more dark stuff and i think a lot of the time that is therapy yeah it's having to get it out you know a lot yeah. you know some of the stuff we've had at Word Up has been obviously quite traumatic yes. experiences that people mm. are getting out. Yeah, and um, I think for a lot of people it does make a difference. Mm. You know, you've seen um, Lee, who we had on the first episode. Yeah, she's Her poetry amazing. is quite dark, but she's one of the the, the best poets yeah. for me to yeah. listen to. Um, and just the fact that somebody like that gets to come and uh, obviously Isaac Holman came. And he wasn't really very comfortable with his writing and stuff like that. And he's come and done a lot of stuff with us. Mm. Um, and he's back doing his thing again now. Mm. He, he's got his voice back yeah, and he's it's comfortable great. again through things like the venue, the forum, which yeah. has accommodated him with his music. Mm. And also through Word Up that's accommodated him with his music. And he comes down and reads poems as well. Mm. And it's, it's such a great thing for so many different types of people and so many different voices to get yeah. up. I and mean, we're getting like, 15 20 people wanting Easily. to read now yeah which for me it's like i could happily listen all day so it's great yeah, yeah. but um it's going to get to a point where we're going to have to sort of maybe disappoint a few people yeah people have to take it in too yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. not this month yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i so. think you're so right dan when you say about like you know people use poetry and creativity as therapy you know i had the privilege recently of going into a women's prison um alongside a, a charity local charity called imago day and they 
they go in all the time and support women in the criminal justice system and those coming out of prison. And I went in and I spent an afternoon with them. And, you know, I shared some of my poetry, just gave them a few tips, gave them a bit of time to write their own stuff. And at the end, we did like our own little open mic. Amazing. And they were allowed to, you know, yeah. come up and speak. And honestly, some of the stuff that was shared, I mean, mm. it was properly hand wrap the box of tissues. We were, yeah. you know, I mean, laugh, barely laughing yeah. and yeah. crying mm. because... Yeah. Well, where is there else to go? You know, you go to the page, you go to mm. your words, you mm. go to your heart and you mm. find what, what is going on and, and you get it out and you process it that way. Totally. It was such a privilege to uh, see that. And isn't society better if we're connected with our emotions and we're able yeah. to process them and we're able to work through them and yeah. able to understand other people can relate to them and yeah. not yeah. feel isolated? That's the point. People can relate because I think a lot of us are in our own little bubbles. Yeah. Um, so, for example, you might have one friend you, you talk to about everything, mm. but that friend doesn't necessarily have the experiences that you need mm. to get through that. Yeah. But if you're sharing it at an open mic, at a spoken word, you'll connect with somebody. Mm. And I guarantee you they'll come up to you afterwards and talk to you about it, mm. yeah. whether it's a positive poem, mm, mm. whether it's a dark poem, whatever. Somebody will connect and will say, mm. that, that voice, what you said, you know, yeah. and that's the difference mm. between, you know, sharing it, with the world, with other people, and sharing it with a friend who really doesn't understand mental health issues yeah, yeah. Mm. or hasn't been through mm. an abortion mm. or something else that you're yeah. trying to put onto a page. But there's somebody out there who's been through it, and mm. I think it's a good way for us to connect. Definitely. Yeah, and that's a positive about social media, isn't it, in this age? I know we hear so much negative, um, you know, and it can be dangerous, you know, for young people, they don't know how to handle it. But I think there's a real positive there to be used. Yeah. You know, I think yeah, when I sure. post some of my poetry online and people who I don't even know, I've never met them. They could be anywhere mm. in the world. And mm. they go, oh, that really helped me today. Mm. Or, that really put a smile on my yeah. face today. And yeah. I'm like, seriously, that's mm. really cool that mm. we can connect, you know. Mm. So be it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. The whole of creativity it and how amazing. we can use it to help each other is just beautiful. And it's also being, um, it's overcoming fear again that, someone is going to ridicule you it's like um at the beginning of word up last month i've made everyone do the cornflake game but you know to prove yeah. the point trying to i didn't do it very well but to prove the point <laughs> you did it brilliant it was good fun <laughs> hannah <laughs> but to prove the point that no one is there to ridicule you you know you sit there like you say in your head going there was around one the person fear. there was one person there was one person that was there. Yeah. i think that, yeah. i think they got <laughs> um but you sit there in your head and you think these people are going to judge me you know we're so scared of judgment yeah and actually just be creative just move through that fear yeah. because great things come when you move through fear yeah. yeah you know that's how doors open that's how don't, life opens don't you think it's cultural though here we you think of how small this island is and how few people there are we have some of the most successful bands in the world mm. and i think because in america um you find a lot of people booing and like, oh my god you know yeah and i think here we just sort of listen yeah we'll have a listen we're very and we polite go, and you know and so somebody who's terrible to start mm. off with yeah. has the opportunity to become brilliant yeah. because yeah. we're all like yes. oh yeah you know we get what you're yeah. trying to do yeah yeah you're not doing it that well yeah but yeah, yeah so it's i think true. there's an element of that that makes so many good creatives come from this country that we are so polite yeah and i really want naomi to read a poem if you've got something you with you, mm. you could read i could that would be brilliant um i could do one that i read word up last month lovely so this is a piece that came about because I had in my mind was just going round and round that poem or chant or phrase, my dad's bigger than your dad, which mm. I just remembered <laughs> from when I was really little. <laughs> and I had that going around my head and I was like, um, so what's the equivalent now? What's the thing that we yeah. go, hey, no, actually, you know. Um, so this is called my tired's bigger than your tired. My tired's bigger than your tired. Life's going at such a pace. So much in we pack meet myself coming back who knew it was one big race. My tired's bigger than your tired. It's mostly the mental load. WhatsApp groups, to-do list. What was it I've missed? Is there one day some prize I'm owed? My tired's bigger than your tired. I dream of my bed all day. My awake time has limits, counting the minutes till I can hit the hay. My tired's bigger than your tired. Though sometimes I try to conceal it. Despite what I try to mask with a lie, the bags under my eyes will reveal it. My tired's bigger than your tired, but I is not as strong as we. 
Don't camp out on Tired Island. Let me know. Reach out and come and be tired with me. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> it is so true though, isn't yeah. it? Oh, I'm knackered. Oh, I'm really busy. Oh, you know. It's like that's just become the accepted <laughs> norm. Yeah. yeah, it's awful, isn't it? I was reading today about um, how someone was saying that they worked a four-day week and then their kid went to school and so they were like, well, what do I do with that fifth day? Do I keep it off on... And she's like, no, I need to use that as a rest day. Like, mm. But we underplay how important rest is. Yeah. And creativity is massively linked to rest, right? Most yeah. of my poems come because I decided to rest yeah. and yeah. stop. And then yeah. you have space. Yeah. 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 You need that space. Totally. <laughs> it's why relationships for creatives are a bit more tricky. Because, you know, you need that space. You need that yeah, place where you can just sort of yeah. be thinking of nothing and then suddenly... Ooh, and it pops in and yeah, that's very it becomes true. important sort of thing. Yeah. I find that space between like awake and asleep, I find mm. that space really, mm. um, really fruitful for yes. creativity. You know, I'll often wake up and I'm not ready to get up yet, but I'm like semi-awake and I'm like, oh, there's a little phrase going through my head. Yeah. Quick, jot it down, yes. you know, just stay in that place. Get it, get it. Whereas if you're just rushing all the time, yeah. you can't always grab those little things that come. Yeah, and it goes back to your kitchen table poem about how, because that's when I started writing poetry was lockdown and it was, I wrote a poem about hold on to your iPad, my dear, like how important that iPad was because he learned on it and it was also how he talked to his friends and it was also yes. how he had his downtime. You know, he played games on it and, how you, but exactly that the the um when you have space and that is like you were saying about the analogy of of poems that in a couple of lines you can say something that could take half an hour to say but yeah. again in that in your brain you need to kick that idea around until yeah. you get the analogy right until you find the thing that connects it yeah yeah um what else do we want to ask Naomi if you've got any questions um well i mean you've got a few minutes yeah i mean you could read another piece yes if you'd like that's piece. always good if you'd yeah. like yeah absolutely but it's nice because you get a whole variety of people on here then don't you yeah yes. different stuff yeah yeah exactly that's the thing <coughs> that's what we try to just give a, a sort of like a, a you know a variation of the different kind of people that come but that that do symbolize what word up's about as well yeah, yeah. um i could maybe do um just trying to find it so I did this piece called um, Entangled Roots, mm. which I, one, yeah. I think I did it at Word Up. And basically, it's about um, it's about the sort of analogy of either being a pot plant. So we either just do life on our own um, or we actually do the mess of being involved in other people's mm. lives and having relationships and having friendships and, you mm. know getting stuck in and volunteering or doing something mm. good and then getting rejected or whatever it is but but actually choosing to dive in and be involved in life um rather than stay on our own um so it's this called entangled roots roots entangled some are yours some are mine sharing life giving goodness as we intertwine Roots entangled deep down in the soil of memories shared, dreams dared to be whispered, plans hatched, there's no going back. If I was a pot plant, the mess would be less, cause no one distress, just me on my own, life clipped and neat, solitary soul growing or wilting alone. But I'm choosing entanglement, pot plant abandonment. I want you to grow taller because I'm in your corner. My leaves to grow fat because you've got my back. Roots entangled, some are yours, some are mine. Let's intertwine. Brilliant. I yeah. Love that. So um, we're doing, uh, you're going to come along to the thing on Saturday. Yes, yeah. the workshop. Um, I've got a workshop on Saturday and it's all to do with nature and using nature to be creative. Um, I wondered if you'd possibly be able to send me that. Yeah. And I, I could possibly read it to the class. I think it's a perfect sort of thing to show because with spoken word, it's quite easy because you can use the sound of nature yeah. in the background. But it'd also be nice to read something like that. that yeah, that, brilliant. That, you know, that it's just using nature as the yes. cre creation of the words. Yeah, if that's okay. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that'd, that'd be too. great. Yeah, because I want I want to use other people's poetry um, to show different voices, and yeah, and also I've got three hours to fill as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And it's fun, isn't it, that some some pieces are fine, like on a page, and they're fine to be read, mm. you know, just in your head. Mm. And some are just really fun to read out mm. loud because yeah. you just want to get your mouth around the yeah. words. Yeah. And that yeah. one, I that quite one like is. reading yes. that yeah. one. So, I can yeah. understand that. that yeah. It is lovely. It's got lots of lovely words. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful analogy as yeah. well. And yeah, I do. As, as a gardener myself, I totally get that. Right, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of plants don't, they'll survive fine, you know, things like hydrangeas and stuff like that, but they won't flower once they're in the pot. They'll just go green every year, won't flower. Really? Yeah, so that there's that's an interesting thing, isn't but, it? Oh, like, that's just the perfect analogy for life, isn't it, and relationships. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. and this is why we love Word Up, because mm. we all get to come and get involved in other people's lives and share a bit of ourselves yeah. and be brave and yes. then step back a bit and then get some encouragement and step out yeah. again. Um, that's life. We need each other, don't we? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Do, do, you, do you think that a big part of sort of being able to get your words out and do that is having, because I always think pressure is quite a good thing. I've had to write sort of certain things for, I wrote something about a dollhouse and it was for the library because they had a dollhouse exhibition. Right. And so it's either a night in a museum or a dollhouse. And I wrote quite a dark thing about relationships to do with, you know, the woman being in the dollhouse and I'm just the dog in the doghouse kind of thing. Um, and I think that pressure, putting yourself under pressure, saying, right, I'm going to sign up to that open mic. Right now I've got to write something. I think that works quite well, that yeah. pressure, that sort of need to do it because there's so many other more important things or that we think are so much more mm. important at any given time, isn't there? Yeah. And there's good pressure and bad pressure, isn't there? You know, yeah. I think that's good pressure to <laughs> yeah. say, hey, I, I want, really want this creative thing to happen. Mm. So yeah. I'm going to put that date in the diary. I'm, I'm going to make I'm it happen. Up it. Yeah. That's, that's so a I think great everyone, way to do it. Everyone should just do that. Say, right, I'm going to be at the next word up. Totally. So the next word up is we are always on the first Wednesday of the month in the evenings. Doors open at 7.30 and we start at 8. And it's always at the Forum in Tunbridge, Wales. And you can just come in. It costs five pounds. Um, it's first come, first serve for the open mic. And yeah, we have a lot of fun and we have so many different people. So absolutely give yourself, those people listening, a deadline. Write something. Yeah. Just, There's also loads of it. really good Dump entertainment in. as well. It's you a know, fun. We have a lot yeah. of uh, artists, um, musicians and other people. Carl DJs for us, the legendary Carl Quinn. Carl Quinn yeah. Um, so it's actually a fun night as well. It's not just... Uh, Absolutely. You know, it's not just sort of like about reading the words. It's about all of us being in the same place and having a great night together, isn't it? Absolutely. So. And we have such a diverse audience. We have young, we have old, we have every colour, we have every sex. Yes. We have everything. pretty much ticked all those boxes. So yeah. there isn't a type that comes to our events. And I just have to add here the feedback that I get at the end of the night. I've had someone come up to me and say... You know, I came along because my ma I said I'd come along for my mate and I didn't really expect it to be very good and I was absolutely blown away. It yeah. was exceptional. Mm. So it just means so much to us when we get that feedback. And I remember a young girl reading and she came up to me at the end and said, you know what the thing was? I just felt heard. And I yeah. thought, you know, that That's is huge. what we yeah. do this for. So yeah. Dan and I are volunteers. Um, this is our last uh, Big Chat podcast for a while because Nicole is going to be doing some different stuff. Um, she's going to join us shortly um, to talk about that. But um, basically, I just want to encourage anyone that's listening to come down, come and either just listen or yeah. feel brave enough, come and you write something. These poems. You'll get a warm welcome. Yeah. No one stands up and, and reads a word out without getting a massive round of applause yeah. today. You yeah. know? No. Just, just for the courage. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, absolutely. And also for the fact that you know that there will be development. There, there will be, you know, everyone has more to give than they than they start off with. And yeah. So, mm. yeah, it's good to see see people's stories unfold. Yeah, yeah. So we've got an exciting thing at Unfest this weekend. We're running um, the outside space for Unfest. And we've yeah. got, um, Dan's been telling me for ages about the Moth podcast, which is amazing. Have you ever listened to that? No, I haven't, but I've heard you talk no, about you it. Really, I you need really to. must. It's short oh, stories, is actually, it? Actually, yes. let me just say, so the, the whole <laughs> thing came about from me becoming addicted to a podcast called The Moth, and it's a storytelling podcast. Then um, I sort of told myself, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get out of my comfort zone. I'm going to do it. And I went with a friend, was absolutely petrified. I th I, when I walked up, I thought I was going to fall over. It was absolutely, it was, it was really, really tough. I enjoyed it. Mm. Um, and funnily enough, strangely, it was in Bethnal Green at the Rich Mix. And the woman who won um, was from Tunbridge Wells. Wow. And so she came wild. up to me 
uh, in the interval and said, oh, well done, that was great. And Rara, and I, I didn't know who she was, but then she got up afterwards and I was absolutely blown away. Mm. She was just a brilliant storyteller. And it's every bit as important as anything else, telling each other our stories. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how impo- that's how yeah. we survive as human yeah. beings, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you tell a story about the animal that you've gone off to hunt in the yeah. woods so yeah. that the next person has an easier task trying to hunt that animal. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's basically human mm. instinct to tell each other, to share these kind of things. Um, and last night at the forum, they had Talvin Singh there, mm. which was amazing because I shared a story mm. about an ex- at Word Up about an experience I had where um, I was doing a gig during uh, at the same time as the Brick Lane bombings. Mm. And on that day, Talvin Singh had come up to me and my band and said, can I uh, play my tablets with you guys? Mm. And, we, and all the guys were blown away and said, mm. oh, my God, Talvin Singh. I didn't know who he was. I was more into hip-hop and other things. So, mm. um, But they were sort of blown away. And we never got a chance to play with him in our band, but he wanted to. And since then, he won Mercury Awards mm. and everything else and whatever. Wow. Um, so it's quite a nice connect that from 20 years ago, this story has come full circle and I've got to meet and chat to Talvin Singh about it. And he remembered the night. Did he? Same way wow. all of us do. Yeah, yeah because it was, it was a big such deal. a big deal, yeah. You know, he yeah. was downstairs in his studio. Mm. He came upstairs whilst we were doing a sound check and wanted to play with us. None of us were allowed to leave the building for quite some time after mm. that. So he, he remembers mm. it mm. pretty well. So it was nice. You know, these creative journeys do go full circle and take you back to, to Talvin Singh. <laughs> yeah yeah totally so we're going to be running story sessions we've got a lot of people that we've asked locally a lot of women that we've asked to share their stories yeah. and trying to elevate a women's voice and um so we've got story slots on saturday sunday and monday now yeah on the heart we start half past on from half past one onwards every hour so half past one half past two three half three etc um, we've got some brilliant things happening are you going to read a story at some point um, I don't, I don't know. Have a listen mm. to the moth and maybe yeah, it would be great to I hear a, a story listen. from you. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it'd be really good. So our next um, word up that's coming up is actually going to be at the George because we're part of the Tunbridge Wells Poetry Festival. So although we are normally at the forum every month in June, June the 7th, once this podcast has come out, we're going to be at the George. Yeah. Um, why, why, why is that? It's because it's poetry in the pub or something. Poets in the pub. Poets in the Tum- pub yeah, so we're right. running it as part of Tunbridge Wells Poetry Festival. It'll be great. Yes. It'll be good yes. We have we have had one there before. Yes. Yeah, and it was fantastic. So yeah. I'm sure it'll be an amazing night. Yeah. So um, that's really exciting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're waiting for Coco. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, you can what, say what, what you do. What would be lovely to say is um, thanks for having us. Oh, bless yeah. you. Coco, it's been brilliant, honestly. It's been a, Good. And what it's been a great experience for, obviously, for our guests, I think, as well. I mean, I'm, I'm not we enjoyed it. I loved it. Have but, you? But, but the time goes very quickly, because when you're talking about creativity, yeah, you know, you could talk all day, really, yeah, about yeah. it. So, yeah, amazing. Um, so I think it's a great experience for people and um, for myself and for Hannah as well. Yeah. It's been really nice working with you. Um, oh, thank you. Well, you guys, I think you're amazing, as you know. <laughs> so... So you're brilliant. Yeah, okay. We, we, no, <laughs> you're no, no, okay. no, no, no. Like, what, I'm, what I'm really trying to say is, I want you to read at Word Up. I think you'd be fantastic. Well, oh, I would yeah. like to read next week, but I'd like yeah. to read something for a friend who's not for a mutual friend of ours who's not very well. Yeah. Who did read at the auction house, didn't he? he did. Ah, so is it, is it his piece that you're going to read? It's his piece. Oh, fantastic. If we, that's want, okay. we want that kind of thing. Yeah, I'd like yeah, to do that, that for him because he can't at the moment. Yeah. So I think that would really work. That'd be really special. Um, mm. So I'd really like to do that if that's okay. Excellent. That'd we would great. love that. And I think that's a really good way for people to kind of start at Word Up as well, yeah. to read yeah. something that's perhaps their favourite poem or something so it takes the pressure off actually having to share what's in your soul. You can share what's in someone else's soul. Mm. Yeah. because Until I you did, feel more confident. I did say to you, I'd sort of, I'd written a poem and it was, it was in a, it was in quite a dark moment. And, and actually a lot of my poetry was dark when I was yeah. younger. So, which is fine. And I'm okay with sharing that. But equally, I'm kind of going through a journey at the moment where yeah. it might not be the right time for me to share. That's, that's a big thing. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes it's just not the right time to share. But I'm still writing it. Definitely, you I, know. I fully so agree it's, with that. it's like kind of, 
I mean, I did. I mean, it's funny, ironically, that I have a studio that's got painted on over the walls because I I did used to write my poetry all over my walls yeah. in my bedroom wow. mm. when I was young, young, yeah. young girl. That's when great. I was, you know, and a few struggles. I, I would literally just in curly, curly writing like the Cure. Yeah. <laughs> so all that's my poems brilliant. always written in that kind of curly Cure oh, writing. Cute. Yeah, oh, and it just, but it, it yeah, I've written, I've written quite a few poems, but um, yeah, so I, I would like to, but it's 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 on my bucket list. Yeah. Good. Don't Good. you think, because it's something you turn to, like you're saying, I, I used to write poems, it's something you turn to as a kid, isn't it? And you think it's really important when yeah. you're young, and everyone sort of has written poetry of some kind, whether when I was young, I started writing poetry, then I started writing raps. Yeah. And I think that it's something we all turn to. So it's really unhealthy that we don't as adults. Yes. That we don't put mm. our thoughts down quite so much and it's, it's, compartmentalise and whatever else we do. It's, no, that's a really, it's a massively valid point because it by getting the words out of you, it, there is something cathartic about that, that if you get your words yeah. written down, you know, every morning I write a gratitude list and I have done for the mm. last 360 days. Mm, I write a gratitude so list every morning, but there is something about powerful about writing it down and yeah. I also send it to someone. And that in itself could be a poem. You know, yeah. some yeah. of the days that that's written, that could be something that I, my gratitude list I could read out and it would yeah. it would sound. You know, when I go and I do radio presenting now, that for me is speaking to it. Because when you're, when you're talking on the radio, it's like you're talking to one person and it's beautiful because you're, you're speaking about things that you feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you're you're voicing you're just voicing it. It's just yeah. giving it a voice. And, Absolutely. Sometimes. And it's, it's it is there is something very yeah like a, I I really enjoy that process. Yeah. I enjoy listening, but actually I don't talk as much as I should <laughs> about me because you know and those parts that I probably need to heal yeah. because I'm very busy listening to others because I mm. love listening to others. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. I think there's we you know. You have to have a real ego to, you know, to be desperate, don't you? Yeah. But it is important sort yeah. of thing at the same time. So. It's interesting you say about lists because one of my absolute favourite poets is a woman called Georgie Jones. Yeah. And she is incredible. And sometimes her stuff is just, it's list. I yeah. mean, it's beautifully put. Yeah. It beautifully poignant. Yeah. You have to do it but well, don't you? But it's lists, yeah. you know, and it's really powerful. Well, you're seeing into someone's soul. Yeah. That's what I think. I think anyone yeah. that bears their words, if they're their words of truth. Yeah. And if they're met by people that they resonate with. Yeah. Then they're seen as into that person's soul, yeah. and that is a privilege. Yeah. That is an yeah. absolute privilege. And I yeah. think that's like what you guys are doing now. And I've seen that you're doing. You know, you're going to do some younger stuff, which is great. I mean, I've just literally been. I'm so honoured that I was made the ambassador of mental health resources, and we really want to work with younger, younger, yeah. you know, adults because the brain doesn't mature an adult mm. brain since 25, mm. and there's this whole gap of of, of areas where you know, people, if they're able to speak, if people are able to speak out, you know, I have an 11 year old daughter that's like, I don't want to talk about it, mummy. You know, that's a, yeah. that's a scary red flag for me because, um, but, you know, it's the way that our society has grown where we do a lot online and yeah. digital and there's a lot more comp- competition and it, uh, it's, it's, it's a tricky one, but I think yeah. simplifying it like you mm. guys do with Word Up and giving people a platform where they can just go and be themselves not be judged and just share and be met in a room full of people that really want to hear what they've got yeah. to say is just it, it to me that's why I wanted to have you guys on here you know yeah and I just want to say on that we are so grateful to you for being so generous and giving Don't us so you? many podcasts and giving us it's the opportunity pleasure. I know but you were so kind because I, I would have done it forever I could if I, I could I would have done it forever yeah, we understand. Yeah. I really would have done it forever and I you know that with with that being said the next few podcasts are the big chat because we normally run weeklies on a Friday. Um, they're going to be dedicated to the soapbox because obviously we've got the soapbox coming up on the 24th of June. But then after that, I am doing something a little bit different with the big chat. So Excellent. that's that's why you guys have now got to look after these guys and every one of my followers has got to follow these guys <laughs> and get behind them whatever they're doing because they are amazing and you know it may well be that you pop up here and there i'm sure but it's people have to understand that the work that all of us do as collectives as creatives there is a cost to it Mm. 
And I know money is a dirty word, but it is there is a cost to it, and there, there has to be a universal exchange. And you guys know this, and yeah. it's it's you know you guys put so much into what you're doing. Yeah. Um, the community needs to know that they they need to support you. They really yeah. need to support. So you. if there is someone out there who's thinking, I'd <laughs> love to sponsor <laughs> a spoken <laughs> word evening, come talk to me. Come and talk. Come to talk to Dan. Nicely done. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, 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 yeah. that, that, that's that's, that's the, a great plug. That's no, like a ten million pound advert uh, right there for words <laughs> up. That is that is the end game because we've been doing it for ten years. Yeah, or, ten or, years. Basically off. The kindness of the forum, yes, and, and and the kindness of people like Naomi and yourselves, yes. people that have just got involved, that have shared. Yeah, I mean Naomi makes a little video, and he gets so many likes Aww. after every <laughs> after every word up, and it's always so <laughs> sweet so cool. with a little bit of music, and and she tries to share everyone in it and stuff like that, and yeah, it's it's just and so sweet. Which, yeah. it's, there is enough room in the world for everyone to collaborate. Oh, absolutely. And if people start mm. saying they don't want to collaborate with you, they're, they're not the they like because you know whatever, then fine. They just they just you don't have to fit. No one has to fit all sizes. No. You know what I mean? Well, we try. We try. Yeah. We try. Of course, we try. Yeah. I mean, we always try. Always be kind. Always be. Always be thoughtful of what you don't always know what's going on in someone else's no, head. Exactly. You know, and, and that's the thing. That's what I mean. I with think kindness. in life, what, the way we have to look at these things, right, is that. We tolerate so much from our friends, from our family, and then we just go and, you know, and just show so much disdain yeah. for others. And it's like, they're things we just accept from our friends. I know. From our family. So just tolerate it. It doesn't matter. It isn't a big deal. Mm. If you knew that person, it yeah. wouldn't bother you. Yes. But take it the same way. You know, yes. I work with kids with autism and epilepsy. Do you? I did used to. You did used to. But the pay was terrible. <laughs> but, uh, well, of no, course. Most uh, no, of the best it, it was very, are. very stressful as well. Yeah, Loads I imagine. Of stress. But the thing is, it changed me yeah. because mm. I realised what I would tolerate and accept mm. from an individual who had autism or epilepsy yeah. compared to my own friends. And yeah. I kind of thought, why don't I just try to tolerate from everyone? Absolutely. Because it will make my life a lot less stressful and I'll be putting so much more negativity in, in the, into the world. Absolutely. Not saying I do tolerate everything. I certainly no, don't. But you especially try. if you get me in the car. But I try. Yeah. <laughs> to get you in the car. <laughs> Is he a little bit road ragey? I just get a bit annoyed, not ragey as such. I and I do always road pull myself but up. Do you know how I got over that? How I don't get road rage is um, if you, you just have to believe everyone's doing their best. Yeah. yeah. If you yeah. give everyone that grace that everyone's yeah. doing their best and you think, well, do you know what? That is their best today. And even if you give yourself that grace, like this is my best today. It might not be as good as yesterday and it yes. might not be so as good true. as yet tomorrow, but it is. And that's good for but the whole just, of life. Yeah, yeah. totally. Just driving. If Let's you assume just do the best that, of people. Yeah, if we assume everyone, this is their best, however they've they're turned doing, up. They're, they're, yeah. Then you're going to do all right Then today. that's all right. But that's it's, it's, it's kind of so similar true. to what I'm saying. Because it is. These guys yeah. I used to work with, things that's were a lot more challenging for them. yeah. You know, because of yeah. situations that had happened, they, things were more challenging. So mm. I'd tolerate it just because it was more challenging for them. It's like, well, I don't know what that person has been through. You so don't, I don't know, know what how much, anyone is going through. How stressful no. just talking, having a conversation is for that person today. Because yeah. every day is a different day, isn't it? And every person has been through something on that day. Yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing I've learned in the last year has been to not judge. To not judge mm. others. Yeah. Do not judge others. Because yeah. it... And words... T- some words can't be taken back. You yeah. have to be very careful what you say, because mm. you know in this in this world that we live in now, where words are easily thrown around. Yeah, you know, just like we're saying, they can be so powerful and so positive, but they can also have really negative impacts yeah. on people. Yeah. yeah. So be kind with your words, mm. and you know, choose know, them carefully. Choose them carefully, yeah. and or at least check in on a situation <laughs> before you say something, yeah. because yeah. you you don't know what's going on fully for those yeah. other people. Um, but I, th- I think, yeah, for me with the big chat, we're going to be doing something totally different from September. I say totally different. It won't be totally different. But You'll be in it. Uh, you're still going to be, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a big <laughs> chatter, big aren't chat. I? I can't <laughs> help that. But, I, uh, yeah, but moving in a slightly different direction that fits better with my life because Excellent. I've discovered that I have ADHD and, um, you know, I stopped drinking nearly 10 months ago and my life's changed dramatically and it's uh, it's had its real challenges. and. Yeah. I think I have the emotional sobriety of about a 14-year-old at the moment. So, which is what happens mm. when you sort of own up to your where you've how you've dealt with stress mm. over your life. Yeah. So it's 
it's not it's not been easy I haven't got it right every time but I'm trying but um yeah. but I do love speaking to people and I want to speak to people for longer yeah because I like to speak I like to chat like, like now mm. we could chat for three hours yeah 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 absolutely. I want to chat to people for three hours <laughs> <laughs> you won't get it every week you might have to have a couple of episodes <laughs> split but it'd be it'll be more in-depth chats yeah. because some of the guests that I've had on you know yourselves included I just, I just want to get into it. I don't, yeah. I don't want to be clock watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's fully. the thing that people don't appreciate is that everything, time costs money. Mm, yeah. Unfortunately, it's a, it is time yeah. costs money and it's something that you can't get back. And that's why the time that you guys give to Word Up and your time and my time and everyone's time is so precious. Mm. It should be honoured and appreciated. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're very lucky in our community because people do really, there's so many good causes. That, yeah. You know, I know you've got strong community lead really helping you with some stuff as well. And it's just, I think it's great. I think all these all these areas that now are popping up, you know, Local and Live have helped me so much and I've helped them. And, you know, my amazing videographer who's very, very mod modest and d demands lilies at every occasion we go to now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, you can't see his face now, but he's a yeah. diva. He's a real diva. But um, no, but you know, uh, collaborating with him as well. I just think collaboration is key. Yeah. Mm. Collaboration, kindness, yeah. and a words. good words and a good bloody laugh. Yeah, yeah. a need, lot of need laughter. To need to enjoy it. If you're not having fun, without that. out. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I'm like that. Fun, not fun, not fun. <laughs> honestly, but you guys are amazing, and you're amazing. And yeah, if I'm a, if I'm a, if I'm allowed to read one of Dave's next week, absolutely, we'd love. At the that. weekend, we've got. Um, open mics running through is all of Is that starting? It's starting, yeah. yeah. So it's Saturday, Sunday and Monday. So that goes, so of course, yes. Yeah. So we've got, you. yes. So uh, Arrested Development on the Sunday. You have not. Yeah, we have, yeah. You have so not. That's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Yeah, it's the 30th anniversary of their um, hit, Everyday People. And Wait, so are you joking? No, no, no. Wow. no, no, no oh I'm my God, that just it. made, do you know what I used to do? This is a funny thing, and I hope this person doesn't mind me sharing, but you know Marcus Welsh. Yes, I do. Yeah. So I yeah, went yeah. out with Marcus Welsh when I was very, very young. He actually introduced me into DJing. I used to, when he was very good on the decks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I used to have a little tinkle with the decks, and I've just come back from Ibiza and trained to do, I can now officially mix on the decks. Super. Um, and I'm doing some stuff for my friend Jeb, Jeb and Coco Why Loco. You make a great DJ. Yeah, well, I like dancing more yeah, than DJing, that's it. but. We're a like a duo. A we're it. Jeb and Coco Loco. So you can follow us, Jeb and Coco Loco, if you want to see silly stuff that we're doing. But Marcus Welsh, he, I had MTV and he didn't have it. Mm. And when I was going out with him, and this is going back when I was like 15, 16, mm. I used to write him, right, a review of MTV. Really? Honestly, wow. of like Arrested Development, yeah, what the song was, was about. Oh, yeah. that's All of that so stuff, cute. Because that, he brought that music to me. Yeah. I, I remember at the time I was a bit of a kind of goth and he was like, a pro and I was like, oh, he's nice. But he's not going to like me because I'm a bit of a wacky goth. And he sort of got me. So you became a hip hop reviewer for him. I, yeah. I mean, that's dedication. <laughs> he basically made me a hip hop, but I used to love it. That it's is like making, so cute. You, know, you make little that is so cute. You're so cute. <laughs> but I did. Sorry if I'm embarrassed. I know he's married to a very beautiful woman. He's got beautiful children. I haven't spoken to him for years, but. I did used yeah. to do that. Yeah. And it's like words that again. So cool. yeah. And I would describe yeah. the song and the beat and the tempo. And because back in the day, like right. yeah, I remember Mark 30 years ago. Me to the Fugees. Yes. Yeah. La, la, la. Blunted on reality. Do you the, know what I mean? You know the Blunted on reality yes. album. Yeah, 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 Soul. I mean, all that. of it. Yeah. It was yes. So yes, I'll be there Sunday. Yeah. I went to primary school with Mark, by the way. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Mark was in the same oh, I love how thing. small Tunbridge Wells is. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's great, isn't it? Love how small it is. It's a small, beautiful world. It really is. Oh, sorry. Did I so mess I, up? Yeah. No, no, no. Perfect it's, locks. No, because um, my, my thing. <laughs> sorry. I'm just sing. disassembling you. I'm a distraction, <laughs> I know. Well, it, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to wrap it up. Mm. Well, I, listen, you guys need to be doing more of this. I know you're going to be doing Word this. Yeah. Up. Word up. <laughs> Word up. We're going to do so, our best. You know, I've sponsorship. showcased these beauties to you. Now, just look after them, please. <laughs> it's my pledge to you all. <laughs> and um, just, you know, just carry on doing what you're doing because you're both great. Can we get Cameo to the forum? Yes. Yeah. What? Word up. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to get cameos in the forum. I mean, like, seriously, just say what you want and we'll get it. Sweet.
Manifesting right. generator. I'll leave that with you, Nicole. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, wait, if you Serious. call me Nicole, you're going to get it. Serious. If you call me Coco, then you Coco. get it. Coco. <laughs> get, uh, yeah, then, you get, then you get what you want. People are learning that now. Call me Nicole. Oh, you got to start that? just like... I've changed my name by default. That. It's happening. Why don't you just do that when people say Nicole? I do. That'll work. Yeah, I yeah. only know you as Coco. Thank you. That's See? my name. That's what you need to say, Dan. <laughs> oh, God, it's terrible. <laughs> sorry, it? sorry, just, sorry, I'm Daniela. <laughs> <laughs> I said to my friend the other day, I was like, how would you like it if I called you Kevin? And his name is Tristram. Yeah. And he went, oh, that feels weird. I went, there you go. That's how it feels. And he went, ah, you know yeah. he doesn't have any problem calling me Coco. Coco. Coco, Coco, Loco. <laughs> anyway, yes, Coco the Chassis yeah. Hatter. So thank you for being on the big chat. Thank you so much thank for having us. Thanks well. for having us. Um, Brilliant. Um, listen, this this is just, I love it. I love everything you do. Do you think, you I, need really to, proud do you think I need to give it a bit of a I, touch I'm up? Gonna, I'm going to sort you out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I am going to. I'm a bit. I quite I'm, like how the story it doesn't exactly, it? Exactly. I like how battered no, it is. Too, it's part of its you know, history. Let, let me gift you something. <laughs> <laughs> I, like to, I like to give a little gift now and again. It's. Uh, I'd like to give a little gift. So let me give you something. And maybe you could come and do something at the soapbox. Yeah, sure. Because yeah. Hannah read last year, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you guys could come and do something on the yeah, stage. Sure. Yeah. Is there is there like a proper PA? Yeah. Well, no, There's we like, don't have anything like proper a, at the soapbox. Yeah, <laughs> There's a proper PA. Is there? Yeah. We've I got ha- Local and Live down there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have a little guy who comes with a guitar who plays some stuff with us. We can see, look, that'd we could talk fun. forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's get words up at the soapbox. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah? yeah? We can get definitely. this sign up. All yeah. right? We'll get the sign up. And it is, you know, and there's going to be plenty of battered, worn... Things at the <laughs> <box>. <laughs> so it'll fit right as in. As long as it's yeah, not yeah. me. <laughs> no, but it is like it is like Hannah says. It's with love. It's it's with love. You know, yeah. things don't always have to be shiny and 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 whatever like that teapot. Do you know what I mean? It's the story they tell. A lovely teapot, by the way. Thank you. My friend bought me that. Yeah. yeah. Thing is, there's an odd amount of cups. Well, there's three, isn't there? Because there was three of you. Oh, okay. Three of us, and one when there. you display things, you should always do is do them in odd numbers. Yeah. Should you? Yeah, yeah. I That's like flowers. That. Supposed yeah. to have an odd number of flowers in yeah. a vase. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah. See, you get the golden nuggets mm. in the last five minutes. Yeah. Any there conversation, it is. and also <laughs> if you do, if you clump together plants, yeah, or, you know, or put in bulbs or whatever, you're supposed to do odd numbers as well. So five, really, three, five. yeah, because if you think about how things grow, um, say you had. How two. does your garden grow? So you had two. Yeah. It's just a little line. Yeah. That gives it depth immediately. Oh, my God, yes. And if you have four, then it goes. it's just a really regular shape. Whereas if you have three, it it becomes more of a, it's more of a space. Kind of. mm, I need to nice. this man more. Yeah. Mm. I'm just thinking, you know what I'm thinking, don't you? I'm thinking. Mm. Well, no, not for my garden, but for something else rather. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, that's not to be talked about now. We'll talk about that off air. His oh, face, yeah. he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, thank you for listening to this week's episode of The Big Chat. Thank you for listening to Hannah. And uh, Hannah, do you want, can you take us out, please? Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in and uh, keep listening out for all the exciting things that the, How can they find out the big about chat's doing, doing. No, well, you can you. find out about us um, we are wordup.tw on Instagram whoop, whoop. and we are um, wordup.tw on Facebook um, so yeah you can get in touch with us there and um, yeah Naomi you're on Instagram are you? yeah, yeah. Naomi Hutch Words so yeah. Naomi Hutch oh, words. Yeah. There it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And and you're always on the word up thing. We, we always sort of share your videos and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So people can connect with you for yep. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks, Positivity guys. and love. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks. And and this is like three Geminis. <laughs> no way. I mean that's scary. The I mean there's place. twins, right? And then there's odd. Three Geminis in the <laughs> same room. That's good. Wow. We, just, we just talked about threes. Good. Exactly. Good. I mean. Yeah. You did well. <laughs> you've, done, you've done well surviving this experience. That's all Great. I'm going to say. It's bye from us, but keep following these guys. And um, yeah, thank you for thank, thank you for being you. a part of this journey with me. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Thanks.